Right, hello lads and lasses and welcome back to Boys Down Under where today another slow, slow news day but just enough news I feel that will keep you guys captivated for a solid 10 to 12 minutes. But before we go any further though, if you guys are enjoying uh, these videos during the off season, I'll try and make them a bit more creative in a couple of weeks when I got the, get a few assessments out of the way. But once that's all over, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy them. But if you do want to support the channel, um, best way to do so, like the video, best way is also to subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to hit 3,000 subscribers before Ange Ball returns, so be greatly appreciative if we hit that. But even if you guys just are watching and you enjoy the content, I'm happy with that as well. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now I can imagine Michael Nicholson sitting either on holiday in Ibiza or in his office at Lennox Town and Shane Max music, here comes the money, money talks. Just playing in the background over and over again because Celtic are projected to bring in a record-breaking revenue at the end of this financial year, which is on the June the 30th of 2023. Now, the previous record was set in uh, the end of the 2017-18 season and was £101 million. This upcoming season's revenue is expected to reach the £110 million mark, and that's from a combination of many things, Champions League money and match day income, and they are expected to be the two biggest sources of revenue for Celtic with a combined total of around £85 million it is projected by, the, uh, by Football Scotland. Now, I know we're looking at this in over a year's time, however, it does mean that Celtic in terms of finances will be very well off for the next few years. And if we can keep putting up numbers in the six digit mark, we will be laughing, absolutely laughing and swimming in the dollar bills, you know. And um, with the projections being record breaking, it does affect this season as naturally the board are going to be a lot more lenient in giving Ange a sizable transfer budget to work with this season, you know. Especially after the success of last season, you know, every almost every single signing Ange made had a uh, had an impact on the squad that no other player could. You know, he has the trust of the board. It very well seems, and if we do want to make a decent dent into the Champions League this year, we're going to need Champions League caliber players. You know, and we can't do that without a sizable budget to bring in players who are going to cost more than you know one to two million pounds. Now. In terms of the projected revenue, it's incredible. You know, it's it's in the six digits, you know. It's record-breaking, you know. And hopefully, the board use it wisely, not just on recruitment, because, you know, that money can go so in so many places in the club rather than just our board's our pockets. You know, we could be it could be put into the youth, you know. It could be put into our training facilities. It can be put into loads of things, you know. that it, it's, a, it's a whole working world, you know, a football club. You know, you've got so much to deal with, and... 110 million pounds is certainly going to go a long way. Now, elsewhere, former Celtic defender Raymond Va Vega has given his take on the Celtic and Cameron Carter Vickers situation, with more importantly, giving public advice to CCV himself. Now, Vega certainly has every right, in my eyes, to uh, make a comment on this situation. You know, he joined Celtic on loan as a defender from Tottenham Hotspur. You know, and he, he's speaking to the Celtic way. Vega stated, if everything can be agreed, then there is no question that Carter Vickers should stay at Celtic. He will play in the Champions League games at Parkhead, and that will be an unbelievable experience for him. It is an unbelievable experience for any player, really. Forget it. Carter Vickers will not get that anywhere else. That's a fact. It is not even a question for me. If Carter Vickers can stay, then he should stay. He will be fantastic at, uh, at, at a fantastic football club. When he looks back on his career, he will never forget such an experience. From that perspective, playing in the Champions League with a club like Celtic would be something pretty special. And with the recent, you know, he's com and he's completely right. 100%. He won't get that game time at Tottenham in the Champions League. And if he does return to Tottenham and tries to try his hand in the Premier League, he's not going to get Champions League football because all the teams rumoured to be interested in him are either coming up from the Championship or are mid-table dwellers. Now... You know, with recent reports saying that Cameron Carter Vickers has actually agreed personal terms with Celtic, that is a positive without a doubt. You know, that can't be discredited in this situation, and he is excelling at Celtic. We all know that. You know, 
You can't. No, if someone tells you Cameron Carter-Vickers has had an average to bad season, you know, they clearly have not watched Celtic play this season, right? You know, he's got his first call up to the US national team in three years, and that is proof that Celtic is giving him a platform to showcase his class to, on, on, a, on, a, on a global stage, you know? And I guess all we can hope for now, because I'm sure Celtic won't be too fussed about, you know, the potential £10 million transfer fee, I'm sure that's, you know, not an issue for Celtic, but I guess what we're going to wait, we're going to be waiting for is, you know, upcoming to that June 15th deadline that has been placed by Tottenham, that Celtic either have made an announcement or are set to make an announcement in the following days. Elsewhere for Celtic, look, there have been, every single day so far this offseason, I swear, Celtic have been linked with a new player, you know, and there have been recent rumours in the last couple of days emerge about Celtic being linked to players such as Joseph Okumnu and Kevin Endorum. Now, if I were you guys, I would take these rumours with a complete grain of salt. You know, I the, the Okumnu rumours, they were originally started by the player's agent. You know, in my eyes, it just seems like his agent is using Celtic's profile as a platform to increase a potential transfer fee from clubs who are legitimately interested in Okumnu. You know, all agents use this strategy. It's nothing new, well, you know. Uh, and with Celtic now in the Champions League again and winning the league again, you know, Celtic, it's, we're, one of, we're one of the most well-known clubs in Europe, right? And like our profile, it's just increasing and increasing again. And it's just natural for our name to be thrown out there and placed in these rumours by agents who are looking to, you know, gather more interest and gather more demand for their uh, talents. And as for Kevin and Durham, you know, he is another player who I really see no way at Celtic. You know, there's no way Celtic could be interested in him. He's not really a player who seems to fit the mould of, 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 of the players that Ange loves to, uh, loves to have, you know. And I don't know where he slots into Celtic's midfield. He's primarily a box-to-box -box midfielder. You know, we've got David Turnbull, Ray Atate, Callum McGregor, Matt O'Reilly, and even Yasuki Itaguchi. That's, that's five players right there, all who are more than capable in playing that box-to-box -box role. You know, like, I just, I think yet again, this is another instance of Celtic's profile being used to raise another, to raise the individual's profile by whether agents or mainly agents, I think, you know, or people just tipping it off. You know, just to, yeah, just to increase that demand in their talents. You know? And look, obviously, both these players, right, they could legitimately be linked to Celtic. You know, there's no question about that. And, you know, Ange and the recruitment team, they could be making to look a play at these two, you know, for all I know. But in terms of face value and what my initial reaction to this is, is that I just don't see how either one of these players fit into Celtic or why Celtic would be interested in bringing either to the club. You know, even as depth players, I don't really see what they offer, you know. I think I think there are much better options for, for a team going into a Champions League campaign. If we're looking at defenders, we should be specifically looking at a left-back, such as Jeze or Ortega, and the two centre-backs I think who are right now the contenders are Ko Itakura and Taylor harwood Bellis. And as for midfielders, I really don't think we need another box-to-box, -box, you know, maybe a CDM, but certainly not a box-to-box -box midfielder, but we do need an attacking midfielder. So yeah, that's just my take on it. I don't see the I don't see any truth or stability to these rumors. I just think these are agents trying to trying to scrounge another couple hundred thousand dollars from some big European clubs by putting Celtic's name out there. But that is all from me. If you disagree with me, leave it in the comments below, you know. Please consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and until next time, hail, hail.